I'm someone that hates a couple of things, okay? Hate's a strong word, but it's a good word for how I feel about these things. There are a couple of things I hate. Uh, one of them is like uncertainty, okay? Like, just, like not knowing the future, not knowing what's happening, just not knowing anything. I hate uncertainty. Anyone with me there on that? Okay, not nearly enough of y'all. Y'all are just, man, got it together, huh? Not like me. All right, and then the other thing I hate is instability. So like change in life. Does anyone hate change? Like change in schools, change in friends, all that stuff? Yeah, okay. A couple of things that I hate, instability and change. And, and I even think of like a couple of things that used to, man, used to get me when I was in your shoes. Like, like I want to know, has anyone ever got a text from their mom that says, hey, when you get home, we need to sit down and have a talk. Anyone ever got one of those texts? Anyone ever got a little bubble in their stomach when they, like a little pit in their stomach? When, yeah, yeah, okay. I've been there a couple times. Or, or what about maybe a friend texts you and is like, hey, we really need to have a conversation. And you're just, man, you're thinking about everything that you have ever done wrong. And for me, for me in those moments, it was terrifying just thinking about the, the, the uncertainty and the instability. Like, man, I don't know what's going on. I wish I knew. I wish I knew right now. Like, I can't wait until I get home. And I don't know what's going to happen when I get home. What if I get grounded? What if my parents take my phone away? What if, what if some of this stuff happens? I hate uncertainty and I hate instability. And listen, I actually think, I think I'm not alone. I could be wrong, but, but I feel like I'm not alone on this. And so, so maybe, maybe you fall into one of these categories. Maybe like you got some friends in your life and you, you constantly feel this uncertainty, this instability of like, man, I have to work for their friendship. And like if they, if they stop approving of me, then, then I'm not going to have them as friends anymore. And then I don't know who I'm going to have as friends. And, and so it's kind of this source of anxiety or frustration or, or fear, the uncertainty of friends. Maybe you're in a relationship. Maybe you're dating a guy or a girl and, and, and you're like, man, I don't, I, don't, I don't want them to break up with me. Just like the uncertainty, it feels like an unstable relationship. And it's, man, it's like killing me. Maybe. Maybe you're thinking about your future. Maybe uh, you're a high schooler in here and you're thinking about what you're going to do after you graduate, if you're going to work, if you're going to go to college, and there's just so much uncertainty and, and it's stressful. Maybe it's a little scary. Maybe, maybe some of you in here are like, you feel that tension in your very own home. Like your home is just, it's never been a place that, that's super stable. And so like you'd love to come back to something that like I just know what it's going to be. I know what's going on. I know what's going to be happening, what the future holds. But yet there's so much changing at home. And, and, and maybe you felt that same tension that you hate that uncertainty, that instability. And here's what I want you to know. I don't believe that's just an accident. I don't believe that all of us just have that in common. But, but I think that God has actually created us in that way to, to look for certainty and to look for stability. And, and oftentimes, if you're like me, you look for it in the wrong places. You look for it in the wrong places, and so maybe you feel let down. Maybe you feel hurt. Maybe you feel confused or any of these emotions. And what I want to talk about tonight is where to look for it. Can, can I just tell you something? God wants to offer you certainty and stability in your life. We're going to talk about what that means, what, what that looks like, but like, I just want you to know that if God created you with that, then he wants to offer some of that to you. If he created you with the desire for, for just certainty and stability, then, then he in some way is going to be able to offer that to you. And so we're going to jump into a story in Matthew chapter 7 to talk about this and what this looks like. If you've got a Bible, I'd love for you to pull it out and begin following along. Uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Oh, look, I didn't know if we're going to have, perfect. Okay, it's right up there. Um, let's read along with this. Y'all got it out? Y'all following along? Cool. All right. Jesus says this, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great 
crash. Here's what you need to know. Jesus, in Matthew 7, he tells a couple of different stories, okay? This is just one of three stories that Jesus tells in Matthew 7, and, and all of them are, are kind of revealing to the audience, Jesus is showing them, hey, what brings stability, what brings confidence and, and assuredness into our life? And, and I just want to give you a spoiler that what we're going to talk about tonight, Jesus' plan for bringing confidence into your life is Jesus wants you to know and be sure of the fact that you are going to be with him for all of eternity. That you know him and you are going to be with him for all of eternity, that one day you're going to stand before Jesus and whatever would have happened here on earth, the way you would have lived your life, one day you're going to stand before him and Jesus is going to welcome you into heaven, into eternal life with him. Jesus wants you to be sure of that. And can I tell you what I see in this story? In Matthew 7, Jesus is talking to a lot of different people who actually chose to come and listen to him. He's talking to this crowd. And so, so I actually think that that the audience that Jesus is talking to, it's kind of similar to this crowd right here and right now. Like, I don't know, maybe some of y'all were just absolutely forced against your will to be here. You don't have to raise your hand for that. That's okay. Maybe your parents just threw you in the car, tied you up, dropped you off, and kicked you out, and you're here. Hey, I'm glad you're here, but the majority of you chose to come tonight and hear and listen. And the majority of the people listening to Jesus tell these stories, they, they chose to come, they chose to listen. And as Jesus is telling these stories, kind of describing what it looks like to know him, to be sure of our salvation, to be sure that we're saved, to be sure that we're walking with him. What he is trying to show and distinguish is not the difference between a Christian and someone who wants nothing to do with God. We know what that looks like. We know what that looks like. We know the difference between that. What Jesus is trying to show in these stories, what's the difference between someone who looks like they're good and someone who's actually good? What's the difference between someone who looks like they're saved and going to heaven? The difference between someone who looks like they know Jesus and the difference between someone who actually knows Jesus and follows him and knows where they're going to be for all of eternity. And so I want to answer that question for us tonight. We're going to uh, just dig through. You can throw that scripture back up there. We're going to keep going up and referencing it. Um, we're going to go through, and here's what I want to show you tonight. If you're taking notes, following along. Three similarities between these two builders. We see two builders. There's three similarities between them, and there's one difference between them. And we learn a lot we learn a lot about what it looks like to really know Jesus and follow Jesus, to be sure of our salvation, to be sure of our eternity. Here's the first similarity we see. Both builders hear the words of Jesus. Both builders hear the words of Jesus. I want to read verse 24 and verse 26 for you real quick. If you could throw that back up there. I'm so sorry to whoever's doing slides. It's going to be a lot of back and forth. Okay, uh, verse 24. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And then just a little later it says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. So, so what do we see? Both of these builders, they hear the words of Jesus. They hear the teaching, what do we learn from that? What do we learn? That, that hearing, that knowing is not enough. If you want to be sure of your relationship with Jesus, of your salvation, if you want to have stability, like, like have this confidence that I know Jesus and I'm going to be with him in heaven one day, then, then knowing, like having knowledge of what Jesus has said to do, simply just hearing Jesus' words it, it's not enough. Both of these builders, they hear Jesus' words, and yet one of the houses crumbles. One of the houses doesn't last. And, and we know this, right? Like, you and I know this. Let me ask you a question, okay? What's going to happen tonight if, if you go home and your mom says, hey, right now, go clean, Bryson, right now, go clean your room. Go clean your room right now, Bryson. What's going to happen, Bryson, if, if you say, 
Okay, mom, I heard you. And then you go and, and I don't know, maybe you play some video games. What do y'all do on a Sunday night? You watch some Netflix, get on FaceTime with your friends, scroll through Instagram, whatever, and you just sit there. Bryson's going to get a whooping. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. Bryson's going to be in big trouble. I'm sorry to do that to you, Bryson, but you would be. Listen, I, like, because, because why? Because we know, we know that hearing and, and doing are not the same thing. Right, just just knowing, hey, like I know my mom told me to go clean my room, but but then I didn't do it. Knowing, knowing is not enough. And Jesus is really trying to illustrate for us, hey, how do you know the difference between someone who who really genuinely loves me, has a relationship with me, follows me, and someone who doesn't? Well, it's about more than just knowing and hearing. And I just I, I want to challenge you with this: if it's not about knowing, if it's about more than knowing, then it's not about how much of the Bible you know. It's about you just actually loving your neighbor. It's about you just caring about your friends. It, if it's not about knowing, then, then Jesus doesn't care how many sermons you've listened to. If there's some sin in your life that you will not let go of, that you will not just listen to him and obey what he's told you, like, it's not just about gaining knowledge. It's not, it's not about how much of the Bible you know. It's about you living out what God has told you to do. It's about more than just hearing. That's the first thing we see. Both these builders, they hear the words that Jesus says, and yet one house stands and one house falls. Here's my, my second point tonight. Second similarity. Both of the builders build houses. Both of them build houses. What do we see? If we throw that scripture back up there, whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The second similarity, both of them build houses. And I don't want to read too much into this, but like I, I look at this and I see, okay, they, they had the same access to information. They both kind of had the same blueprint for, for how to build this house. And as we're looking at it, it, it would seem as if these houses actually look pretty similar at face value. What it doesn't say is like, hey, the wise man, he built a mansion. And, and the foolish man, like he built a little, a little hut, you know, he built a little lean-to. And, and the wise man, he built this massive Mass of beautiful house in this this foolish man, like you know, he had a little he, he had a little little thing going on over here. No, no, no. Just says, hey, both of them built a house. Like like at face value, they look the same. There, there's two houses that are standing, and yet one of them is going to continue to stand, and one of them is going to fall. And so, what do we learn from this story that Jesus is telling? We learn that that it's not about outward appearance. Your salvation, like you being certain of your relationship with Jesus, that you are going to be with him for all eternity. It, it's not about just looking the part. It's not about just looking like a Christian. And can I just, can I be honest? I think that if we are real, like we affirm that, we agree to that, and yet the way we live our life is totally different. It's so easy for us to be in a space where, where we come here to radiate and we try to look like a Christian here. Like, man, if my other friends here, if my youth leaders, if my youth pastors, if they affirm of me and see that I'm, I'm living the Christian life, then surely that will mean I'm good and, and I'm going to be with Jesus. And, and, and Jesus said, no, it's not about outward appearance. It's about something more than that. And, and so, like, what I just want to challenge you with is, is are you the kind of Christian who comes and, and you look like you have it all together here and yet when you're alone... Your life looks a totally different way. Man, like, like there's a side of you, there's, there's some struggles you have that no one else knows about. We never see them here. I mean, you look like you got it all together here. You're like, you're like the house that's the standing here. And then when you go home, it, it really reveals that, that something is wrong. That you don't actually want a relationship with God, that you don't want to obey him and, and follow him because Jesus is saying, hey, it's not about outward appearance. It's not about outward appearance. There is a house that looks like it will stand. 
and it doesn't stand. Here's the last similarity we see between these two builders. Both of them face storms. Both of them face storms. We throw that scripture up there one more time. It says, for both of them, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. For both of these houses, storms are coming. And so I want, you to, I want you to hear this tonight. You don't follow Jesus. You don't begin having a relation, relationship with Jesus to, to avoid the storm, okay? You have a relationship with Jesus to make it through the storm. And while Jesus, part of what he's talking about may be the storms of life, like the bad things that happen to you and I. Like, listen, Jesus is our rock, and Jesus will help us through those hard times. But actually, specifically what Jesus is talking about in this passage, all of this reference of a storm, Jesus is talking about what's called judgment day. This day where, where every single person will stand before Jesus and give an account of their life. Like, this is what Jesus is speaking about. Can I, can I tell you something? That this isn't, like, a popular thing to talk about right now. Like, people actually may get offended when you begin to talk about this. But the reason, the reason that I'm here, that I'm even on stage right now reading this and, and, and bringing this to you is because I am 100% convinced that every single person in this room, in this city, every single person who has ever lived will one day stand before Jesus and have to give an account of their life. And, and, and what is Jesus trying to tell these people? As he's talking about judgment day, as he's talking about, you know, facing him, he's saying, on that day when you stand before me, it's not going to be about how much knowledge you have, how much you know. Like, like when you stand before me and I ask you, why should I let you come into heaven? The answer is not going to be, look how much I know about the Bible. Look how many sermons I listen to. God, like, like, look how much I know and look how much I heard. And it's not going to be outward appearance. It's not going to be like, well, well, all these other people looked at me and, and they thought I was a Christian. Like, I looked like I had it all together. It's not about either of those things. Jesus is so lovingly, lovingly trying to warn the people listening to this, and he's trying to warn you and I today that, that all of us are going to have that moment in our life, and Jesus wants you to be certain about what's going to happen in that moment for you, and, and, and so what do we do? Like, what do we do to make sure that, that we're certain about where we stand with Jesus in that moment? What does that look like? Well, what's the one difference between these two builders? Both of them build a house. Both of them hear the words. Both of them face a storm. What is the difference? And the difference is this. The foundation of the house. The foundation of the house. You see, the foundation was the starting point for building a house. In Jesus' time, it is... Uh, the most secure material to use for the foundation of a house w was a rock. It's a rock. It's solid. It doesn't change form when it gets wet like dirt or, or like mud. It's not easily moved. It's, it's heavy. And Jesus is using this picture of building a house to show you and I what, what a stable life looks like, what a certain life rooted in Jesus looks like. I want to read this one more time. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. I know I've read this like 100 times. But, y'all, we have got to get this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. So, so Jesus, I mean, this is so clear and so simple. What is Jesus saying? Hey, if you want to be certain about where you stand with me on that day, you, you hear my words, you hear my teaching, and you put it into practice. And you put it into practice. You don't ignore it. You don't walk away and, and not listen. You hear it, and you put it into practice. And there's a word for this. There's a word for this. It's called faith. 
Like Jesus is saying, hey, it's all about this. If you will just hear what I'm saying and put your trust in me, like actually have enough faith in me that, that you believe these words as I'm saying them, so much so that, that you'll, you'll follow them, you'll practice them, you'll, you'll live like the way I tell you to live, then you will be like someone who builds your house upon the rock. You know, I, I, I remember, I, just a quick question. Who in here was born after 2012? Anyone? After 2012. Okay, who was born before 2012? Okay, listen, there was an event. There was an event in 2012 that, that I remember. Um, most of y'all probably don't remember this, but the world was supposed to end in 2012. Y'all, anyone remember that? Anyone remember that? Like, it was like crazy all over the news. Dude, I was like so excited for Christmas that year. And everyone's like, the world's going to end. And I'm like, what? Dude, like, heck no. I want to have Christmas. This is crazy. But I remember, I remember there were actually some people. There were actually some people who like just quit their jobs. Like there were students who just stopped going to school. Like that's how much they believed that the world was actually going to end. It was all over the news and everything. It was kind of crazy looking back on it now. But, like, I just, he, he, here's what I imagine. Here's what I think of when I look back on that. Like, everyone heard the news. Everyone heard that the world was supposed to end in, in 2012, okay? And, and only a small amount of people had faith. And what did that faith look like? It looked like them actually living like the world was going to end. And here is, can I just tell you, here is one of the issues, with Christians, is so many people, they hear Jesus' teaching. They hear what God has commanded. They hear what God's told us to do. And yet we live like we don't believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead. We, we don't believe that life is found in Jesus and in Jesus alone. Like we don't believe these things in, in Jesus is saying in this story. It just takes faith. You want your foundation upon me. It takes faith. Hear what I say and trust me enough to actually put it into practice. And when he says, you hear my words, can I just, can I tell you something? Like the context for that now, what Jesus is saying is, hey, read the Bible. Like hear my words and put them into practice. And, and, and if I could just tell you, this book is all about one person. From beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation, it's all about one name. The name above every other name. The name that we sang about, the name of Jesus Christ. It all points to him and glorifies him. And Jesus is telling us, he's telling us, man, if you will just hear, listen, and put it into practice, you'll be like the man who built his house on the rock. And so here's what I want to do. I'm going to invite the worship band up in, in just a minute, and, and we're going to land with worship in just a second. But, but I want you to think about this, and I want to kind of present this before you. There's some of you here in this room, and man, you've never made Jesus your foundation. Jesus has never been your rock. You've never been certain about where you stand with him. And tonight, like tonight, I'm pleading with you that you would just, you would leave this room being certain of that. What does that look like? Like we talked about listening and putting into practice. Listening, having faith, trusting, and then just doing. And so the very first step tonight, if you've never done that, is to put your faith in Jesus. And I just, some of you in here, like right now, maybe over the past 10, 15 minutes, you've felt this like nudge in your heart. It's the Holy Spirit just, man, just telling you tonight, tonight you need to make Jesus the foundation of your life. Tonight you need to stop searching for stability and certainty in all these other places and you need to trust in Jesus. You see, Jesus, we, we talked about it and we sang about it. He's God and, and he put on flesh and he lived this perfect life. This life that you and I couldn't live because we've rebelled against God, because we've sinned. And because of that, there's separation between us and God. There's this gap between us and God. And we were created to have a relationship with God. 
And so you see the issue there. So the God that we were created to, to have a relationship with and know we can't know because of our own sin and our own rebellion. And so Jesus, he lives his perfect life. Not one time did he sin. Not one time did he mess up or make a mistake. He was perfect. He was perfect. And at the end of his life, he died on a cross. And when he did that, he paid the penalty for all of your sin. So that now when God looks at you, God sees his, his perfect son, Jesus. Like, what? Man, wh I, I, I have such a hard time fathoming that. That on my worst day, I mean, man, I'm messed up and I make mistakes all the time. That on my worst day, because of what Jesus did on the cross, God looks at me and he's like, I love you. And when I look at you, I see perfection. I see my son some of you tonight, you need to enter into that with Jesus. Where does that start? With you simply turning from your sin. It's called repenting, turning away from your sin and turning to God. Just letting you know, Jesus, I trust in you. God, I believe that you died on the cross, that you rose again, and that when you did that, you paid the price for my sin. Maybe there's some of you in here and given your life to Christ, you've followed Christ, and yet you're just, you, you know there's areas of your life that you've heard, you know what to do, and you are not putting it into practice. There's areas of your life where, man, you know you're not living in the way that God wants you to live. And I just, tonight, if that's you, I want to encourage you encourage you to be like the wise builder who built his house upon the rock. He trusted in Jesus. We sing and, and we read about how Jesus, in him is life and life abundant. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus says, in me you can have life. And yet so often we're looking other places for life, for enjoyment, for fun, for satisfaction other than Jesus. And so, so we're going to sing, I'm going to pray and we're going to have a moment to worship and, and sing this song about how Christ is our firm foundation. But, but tonight, if Christ is not your firm foundation, or if you know that you need to turn back to Christ as your firm foundation, then as we worship, I want you to just find a leader in the room. You met him earlier when we came in the room. I want you to just tell them and ask them to pray with you. Ask them to walk you through that. Man, that's why we're here, and, and, and to think, my worst fear is that some of you would come into this room, and, and you would hear, you would feel the Holy Spirit nudging you, turning you to Jesus, and that you would just walk out of this room unchanged. I'm pleading with you, this is the best decision you will ever make. So don't be worried about what other people think of you be worried about if people are going to look at you, Jesus will change your life in the best way, because that's what he did to me. So I'm going to pray. The band's going to come up and sing, and if you need to respond, then grab a leader. Lord, we